Hi. Welcome to Homeopathy Medicines. Today in this classic homeopathic materia medical lecture discuss about homeopathic medicine Cuprum Metlicum. By Dr. Farrington, MD. Before starting this video please subscribe to this channel. We need support from you to make this channel more beautiful and more informative. Now going to discuss about Cuprum Metlicum, its uses and symptoms. Cuprum Metlicum and Cuprum Aceticum are used interchangeably by many physicians as having the same symptomatology. The original idea of those who proposed the substitution of the latter for the former was based on the supposition that the acetate of copper is soluble, while the metallic copper is not. This applies, of course, to the crude drug, but not to the patentized preparations. Copper has for its complement Calcarea austrirum. It is antidoted by sugar and albumin. Hepper, as a general antidote to the metals, comes into play as a dynamic antidote, as do also belladonna and stramonium. Copper possesses considerable interest as a prophylactic in disease. Workers in copper seldom contract Asiatic cholera. Here it resembles sulfur. Unlike sulfur, however, it is a remedy for the symptoms of cholera. It is indicated for the following symptoms intense coldness of the surface of the body, blueness of the skin, cramps of the muscles, the muscles of the calves and thighs are drawn up into knots. There is considerable distress, referred by the patient to the epigastrium, and THNS is associated with most intense dyspnea. So intense is the dyspnea that the patient cannot bear his handkerchief approached to his face, it takes away his breath. Now this picture of cuprum seems to place it between camphor and argentum nitricum. Camphor has symptoms of collapse, like cuprum, and argentum nitricum has terrible distress in the epigastrium with dyspnea. It differs from camphor in this, camphor lacks the prominence of the cramps which are ever present in the collapse of cuprum. There is another condition in which cuprum may be used, and that is in the uremia or uranic convulsions following cholera. The character of these convulsions will appear in a few minutes when I speak of the nervous symptoms of the remedy. We find cuprum indicated in chlorosis, after the abuse of iron. The symptoms are worse in hot weather. We also find it indicated in fever with marked tendency to frequent relapses, hence in a sort of relapsing fever. It is not the specific relapsing fever, but rather a fever in which the relapses are the result of defective reaction. Cuprum when taken in large doses, produces an inflammatory colic, presenting a combination of neurotic with inflammatory symptoms, these are gastroenteric. We find the abdomen as hard as a stone, the bowels are at first obstinately constipated, the constipation being succeeded at times by bloody greenish watery stools. The vomiting is terrific and is spasmodic in its character. It seems to be relieved by a drink of cold water. Here it is very different from arsenicum, veritrum and other remedies. Now what takes place in this group of symptoms? In the first place, cuprum not only acts upon the bowels inflaming them, but it acts upon the nerves, causing constriction of fiber, particularly of the involuntary muscular fibers, as in the blood vessels, and with this we have direct irritation producing inflammation. Now, to clearly understand the character of cuprum, you must remember the other side to this picture. This condition is soon followed by collapse with great prostration, from which it is exceedingly difficult for the patient to rally. Thus we have as a remote symptom of cuprum, and one, two, which has been greatly neglected, lack of reaction. We have seen that quite a number of remedies are useful in this condition. We all know that sulfur may often be used, we have learned under what circumstances carboveg is called for, that law erosericus, valerian and ambergrisae are suited in some nervous temperaments, capsicum in flabby, lazy individuals of lax fiber, and serenum in well-marked sauric cases. But here we have, when cuprum is the remedy, a tendency of all the symptoms to relapse. Especially is it an indication when this lack of reaction occurs in persons who are thoroughly run down by overtaxing both body and mind. I know of a case in which cuprum prevented paralysis of both legs, and this was the indication, 
overtaxing of both brain and body. So, too, in pneumonia, we may have to use cuprum to bring about reaction before the appropriate remedy will cure. It is indicated by sudden suffocative attacks, with coldness of the surface of the body, with great prostration and dyspnea disproportionate to the amount of solidification. The body is covered with a cold viscid sweat. The main action of cuprum and that which will call for its most frequent use in practice, is on the nervous system. We find it indicated, for instance, in spasms with affections of the brain, as in meningitis. No remedy in the Materia Medica excels it, and very few equal it, in this direction. We find it indicated when there has been an eruption suppressed, whether that be scarlatina, measles or erysipelas. The symptoms which call for it are these, delirium of a violent character very much like that of belladonna, the patient bites the offered tumbler, loquacious delirium on awaking from sleep, or on becoming conscious he appears frightened. Here is the exact counterpart of stramonium. But it is a far deeper acting remedy than stramonium. The convulsions usually start from the brain with blueness of the face and lips, the eyeballs are rotated and there are frothing at the mouth and violent convulsive symptoms, especially of the flexor muscles. The convulsion is followed by deep sleep. Now this spasm, especially if epileptic, may be ushered in by a violent shriek or cry. There is grinding of the teeth. Cuprum is indicated not very frequently in neuralgia, but it may sometimes be used in sudden attacks of neuralgia with active congestion affecting the nervous supply of the involuntary muscles. Cuprum arsenicism I have used in the third potency, on the recommendation of Dr. J. H. Marston, for neuralgia of the abdominal viscera. I have prescribed it in cases in which no other remedy seem to be indicated, and I believe with excellent success. Thanks for watching this video. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon. Comment us your feedback. Like and share this video with your friends and family. For paid and free consultancy online, visit homeopathymedicines.com and mashclinic.com. Thank you. Have a nice day. Stay healthy stay happy.